Mr. Clare, Heather Clare, Maths, you've done your National 5 Maths exam, hopefully you did well and you feel confident that you're going to do higher next year. And if you did, this is a video to watch. Course modifications for 2023 are gone. In 2024, the whole of higher maths is going to be taught. Now, what that means for you is there's going to be some topics which you've never actually seen in school that are going to be assumed knowledge for higher and you will need to know them. On top of that, all of National 5 stuff that you've all been taught now is assumed knowledge. And there's certain things that you need to be good at to be successful at higher maths so you're not hampered. And this video aims to go through it all. So let's get started for everything you need to know for 2024 for your higher maths at this stage. Okay, so we've got some new topics that are going to come in next year that students have not been taught for the last few years, or at least not examined on. The first today one is vectors. Vectors is in the National 5 course as well, which you've probably not seen because you're not done, it wasn't in the exam. And also there's recurrence relations that's not in that five, luckily, so you can start fresh there, but you kind of need to remember some stuff about sequences, which is what the current relationships are. Let's go through vectors very quickly for that five to see a feel of what you need to actually brush up on. Hopefully your school will go through this with you, but if you don't, come back here and I'll get a good video from vectors at that five and for higher. But the stuff you need to know from that five briefly, something called vector pathways. So if we take this past paper question, the diagram shows parallelogram A, B, C, and D. And it says AB is represented by U, as shown, and BC is V, express BD in terms of U and V. I'll briefly go over this, but you'll need to much, a much more in-depth video to actually learn this properly. But we are going from A to B as U, and B to C as V, and I want to get to B to D. Now, B to D is along here, I don't know what that is, but you can take any path you want to get there. So I'm going to start at B. If I go along to C, I have went along V. So I've got V. And then from C, I'm going to go back to D. Now, that's the same size as this one, so it's just U. But I'm going backwards, so it's minus U. So it's just V minus U. And you can do lots of these and get practice, but that's one basic example. The next one's vector components. Given that P and Q are these vectors, find a half P plus Q. This works the way you think it would work, to be honest. You half the P, half the numbers, and then you add the Q. So a half P is going to give me... 2 and minus 3, and then we've got Q, so we've got 2 minus 3 plus minus 5 minus 1, 2 minus 5 is minus 3, minus 3 plus minus 1 is minus 4, so there's our final answer. And the last one, quite important, this one, the magnitude of a vector, find bar R, the bars mean the magnitude the size of a vector, and R is given by this vector, so you've got 24 minus 12 and 8, so to find the magnitude of a vector, it actually works a bit like Pythagoras. It's essentially, it actually is Pythagoras. So it's the square root of all the numbers squared added together. So in other words, the size of R for this one is equal to the square root of 24 squared plus minus 12 squared plus 8 squared. And you just get your calculator and work that out. Which equals a whole number answer is 28. So that's the magnitude of R. But that's a brief overview of vectors in R5. Obviously, that doesn't, is an exhaustive list. We've not went through in depth what a vector is, what to do with it, what's it used for. We're not going through everything. We're just a very brief overview. The little key things you need to know from that 5 well, will be a bigger video on vectors at a later date. But listen, we want the recurrence relationships. So recurrence relationships, good enough, is not actually in that 5 What it is, is it's an extension of sequences, which you'll maybe learn in S1 or S2 or S3. Uh, so I would revise basic sequences, revise the nth term, but don't worry too much about this because it will be taught in depth at higher and I will do a great video on it as well. And to finish off with key National 5 topics that you need to be good at. Things that in higher are assumed knowledge but come up over and over again. The first one, the main one, is straight line. Now straight line is a topic at that higher and it's quite a big topic. It's probably one of the first ones that will get taught next year. You need to be able to do straight line straight off the bat. You need to be able to find the equation of straight line, y minus b equals mx minus a. You need to be able to find the gradient. You need to be understand what happens if two lines are parallel to each other. You'll look at perpendicular lines and higher, but be very confident with manipulating equations of straight lines. The next thing that is assumed knowledge that comes up all the time, especially in the algebra section of higher maths, is suds and indices. Being able to go from one to the other, things like eight to the third, being the same as the cube root of eight. Eight to the minus third being the same as one over the cube root of eight. Going back and forth between those thirds and index forms are very, very important. Make sure you're comfortable with that. Quadratics, 
it's a topic already in higher, it's a quite a small topic, it moves on to higher order polynomials, but you need to be able to manipulate and solve quadratic equations that come up all the time. You need to know the quadratic formula off by heart. You need to be able to factorise any trinomial pretty quickly. So I would really be really revising, factorising quite a lot and solving and the, the words that come up, like the roots of an equation, meaning where it crosses the x-axis. Completing the square, again, you'll need to be able to complete the square. It is a topic of higher maths that extends it a little bit, but you need to know what it means as well. Being able to find the axis of symmetry, being able to find the turning point from completed square form. Trigonometry, all the trigonometry in that five is very important. You should know it all. The sine and cosine rule doesn't come up as much, but you need to know your trig identities and your trig equations. Trig graphs come up quite a lot as well, higher, and trig equations come up massively. So it is a big topic that you should be really, really secure with. And the last one, any algebraic manipulation, being able to solve equations, being able to make things the subject, being able to solve inequalities. All that stuff should just be second nature to you when you're doing your higher maths so you don't get bogged down in it. Now, I don't want this to sound scary. It sounds like a lot, yes. But at this stage, early on, those that are going to do well at higher will now go and make sure that they revise these key topics. Check my videos, check my playlist, or check anybody else that you follow. I will be making up another video later going through in depth some key topics for higher maths. But right now, it is on you to go and revise and make sure that you are confident and happy and secure at it. You will be successful at higher maths next year. I promise you if you just stick in and start studying now. Get in an hour a week couple of hours a week, just chip at it as you go because the course can get really quick and really fast and you don't want to get bogged down and get too late into the year and you're thinking this is too much for me. So just take your time, take it slow and just go make sure you're really, really comfortable with at least all the Nat5 stuff by summer, okay? If you need any help, look at my Nat5 videos for 2023 and also look out for some new videos coming up, especially on vectors because I'll do a Nat5 vectors video very, very soon. Hopefully you find this video useful. This has been Claire on Maths. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye.